Hi, I'm Dr. Jenny Mitchell and I want to share a few good tips on data visualization and storytelling. This is an excerpt from a leadership conference held in Terre Haute, Indiana. Let's look at data visualization foundations, how your brain processes information, and how visualizations can help tell a story. First, let's look at Escombi's Quartet. These four data sets seem similar. The averages are the same, the correlations the same, the linear, even the linear regression equation is the same. So statistically, I might conclude that these four data, data sets are very similar, right? Now let's look at the graphs. Do the graphs look similar? No. Data set 1 has a rough linear relationship with some variances. Data set 2 looks quadratic, but it's certainly not linear. Data set 3 has a tight linear, linear relationship with one outlier. And data set 4 remains co constant with one outlier. The point is, we see the relationships of the data sets visually through graphs. And in this case, the visualizations tell the real story when comparing the four data sets. More importantly, our eyes see trends, gaps, outliers, and alignment and position like what you see ranked here on the eye chart. But the real magic happens when we add context to the visuals. Webster defines storytelling as discourse designed to connect a series of happenings. Neural coupling explains how the listener turns the presenter's story into their own experiences. Mirroring explains what I mean when I say something like we're on the same wavelength or we're on the same page. If you only present facts, two areas of the brain are activated. But if you use a well-told story, you engage many additional areas. And if the storyteller evokes an emotion, you will remember the story with greater accuracy. But more importantly, if it's an emotionally engaging story, the brain produces oxytocin, a substance shown to increase generosity, compassion, and trustworthiness. So how can we use visualizations to tell our story? Let's start with the basics from Noah Elinsky. According to Noah, there are four pillars of visualizations. For purposes for purpose, consider who, why, and what they need to understand. Then what actions do you want them to support or what takeaway message do you want them to remember? With the pillar content, you should consider what to visualize. With the pillar structure, you should consider how to visualize it. With format, format means what will appeal to your audience and will help them focus. The context is where you can use storytelling, but today I want to focus on the good, the bad, and the ugly visualizations. Now why is this pie bad here? Can, can Perhaps could we group the categories so you only have the top five major, major categories because this is too many sections of the pie. The ugly one here combines order month and category by order month, category revenue by order month, month and all I can see here is that I can tell that black which represents beverages is the bi biggest seller. I would need something like a slicer or a category filter so that it would I could actually understand what's going on. Now let's look at this correlation table. Employees and administrators were asked the same questions. With a little highlighting we can tell that administrators found the questions highly correlated to each other. Employees did not. It's easy to see that employees and administrators are not on the same page. Another example is to borrow structure of what people already know. This man was one of the best hitters in the American League for the Yankees, so my audience would certainly need to understand baseball if I use this analogy. Remember to avoid clutter, 3D anything, and graphs that add up to more than 100%. Pay attention to detail by providing descriptive titles and remove legends that are not needed. If you include an infographic, make sure it meets the four pillars of visualization and the five W's. 
the average person is subjected to 174 newspapers worth of information every day, but filter it down to just 1%. That means 99% of the daily information is thrown away. We don't want our information thrown away. So think of ways like perhaps using a word cloud to add meaning. For example, in this employee survey, administrators thought the key issue that their employees would identify would be low wages. But in fact, it was unfair treatment, schedule, and errors on paychecks. So remember that context is the best place for storytelling, and visualizations, if done properly, should support your, pro your project and add clatter clarity. Remember this is important because it allows trends and patterns to be more easily seen, and the audience can connect to that better. Thanks for listening.